Welcome to the Irish National Stud, which is around 30 minutes drive from the centre of Dublin. And it's the birthplace of such stars as Desert King, Casamento and the one and only See the Stars. It's also the only stud farm in Ireland open to the general public and they have around 115,000 visitors here per year. There's plenty to see and do, so we've come along to have a look for ourselves. The stud has been breeding horses since the early 1900s, so they have had plenty of time to perfect the art since the days in which its founder, Paul Walker, allowed the stars to guide him in the mating of mares. The current CEO is John Osborne, who takes a much more conventional approach to producing future champions. The founder of this farm was a, an English gentleman called William Hall Walker, later Lord Wavertree. And when Hall Walker died, the Aga Khan wrote to his estate, pointing out the fact that it was Hall Walker himself who introduced the Aga Khan to horse racing. So this links between this, the foundation of this farm and the Aga Khan getting involved in racing is absolutely cast iron. And then the biggest investment the Irish state ever made in a stallion was in 1952 when the Irish state bought Tullyar from the Aga Khan for 250,000, which is about 10 million in today's money. A huge investment from a relatively impoverished country. But that was the commitment that the Irish government had towards the development of thoroughbred breeding in Ireland. And you'd have to say many decades later that that policy has been 100% successful mm. because pound for pound, Ireland is the best place in the world to breed racehorses. That commitment remains today and the stud continues to invest in quality bloodstock. There were nine stallions in residence at the time of our visit, all housed in their own immaculate yard. The stallions have all just come in from their paddocks and they're having their dinner at the moment. And one of them is Elusive Pimpernel, a dual Group 3 winner who picked up the Acom Stakes at York and also the Craven Stakes at Newmarket. They were the crowning points of his career. We've also got Werthad here, a son of Dubawi, who raced much of his career over in Italy. And his best moment in England was when he pushed Camford Cliffs all of the way in the Locking Stakes at Newbury. Lord Shanakil. 2006 was when he was born and he's picked up a Group 1 over in France, the winner of the Prix Jean Pratt. And down here we've got another Group 1 winner who raced at Royal Ascot for Michael Bell, art connoisseur, a very good sprinter who won the Golden Jubilee Stakes and he's been in his box the whole time having a bit of a, a quiet afternoon. The most successful current resident is Invincible Spirit, 25% of whom is owned by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. With Kingman in particular doing him proud on the race course this year, he is currently the second most successful sire in Europe after Galileo. Yeah, he knows he's a celebrity. We, uh, he's our, our star at the moment, he's having a fantastic season. He's the sire of the champion three-year-old in England, Kingman. He also had a Group 1 winner recently in Charm Spirit. Uh, but he's, he's a sensational stallion and has been since the very beginning. Mm, he's getting on a bit now. I think he's 17 years old, but he looks a picture. Yeah, he looks a picture. He's had a great season. He's covered a lot of mares, but he's taken it all very well. And Touchwood, you know, we hope uh, we, we have him for a long time to come. You know, He's climbed to the very top from relatively uh, humble beginnings so that's been a feature of the stallions here down through the years you know we, we don't have the sort of funds that some of the stallion farms might have to go and buy the horses so we tend to have to start with relatively modest stallions but we know that with the support of our clients and the mares that we get every year that you know that they can deliver the goods so Invincible Spirit started at a fee of 10,000 it probably fell to about 5,000 before he started to climb again when the results happened on the track. And he had a classic winner in his first crop. Lawman won the French Derby mm. from his first crop. And you know, this year he stood at 70,000 euro and he was oversubscribed at that. So that's what can happen with a stallion's career when the winners start to flow. He now has eight sons at stud, so he's becoming a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a star in terms of he's now creating his own dynasty 
which is the next stage in the stallion's career when you get to middle age like he is. Uh, he had one shot in Australia of making the grade as a sire of sires when I Am Invincible was retired. And I Am Invincible is the champion first season sire in Australia this year. So from one opportunity, he's a champion sire of sires in Australia. And we, in Europe, we've got Lawman as a classic sire. Zebedee is the leading first season sire this year. Uh, so the sons of Invincible Spirit seem to be able to transmit the genes as well. So that makes it even more exciting. And what's he like to be around? Because he was very professional, of course, and he was walked up and down for us. But usually the, the very good ones have a bit of a spark. Yeah, I mean, all stallions are big, powerful, slightly dangerous, possibly. With Invincible, he has a really good attitude. Um, he has a great relationship with Daffer, our head stallion man, Michael Kelly, who's been with us for a long number of years. And we find that the horses respond very well to Daffer's quiet way of going. And we also have them in a very um, natural sort of environment in that we turn them out as much as possible. And I suppose it's one of the great advantages of Ireland. We have a very temperate climate. It never gets very hot, it never gets very cold. So for most, almost every month of the year and almost every day of the year, it's possible to turn horses out in Ireland. So they're in their natural environment, moving around, relaxing, chilling out. If, if you coop a horse up all day, every day, interminably they get bored they get a little bit rank they they you know and, and sometimes they're a little bit harder to manage we find that our horses settle into a nice routine here and they behave accordingly while invincible spirit has nothing left to prove gale force 10 has his whole breeding career ahead of him the stud's newest arrival he won the group three jersey stakes at royal ascot for aiden o'brien and concluded his racing days with mike de Kock at maidan he will cover his first book of mares in 2015 and is already proving popular with breeders. He's the son of Oasis Dream. He's a Royal Ascot two-year-old who won the Jersey Stakes as a three-year-old at Royal Ascot. And we find Royal Ascot is the key meeting for creating stallions. Everybody's watching. It's midsummer. The ground is usually fast. The pace is fast. It's the good horses win at Royal Ascot. The Jersey Stakes has been good to us. We hope that Gale Force 10 will be good to us too. He was a lovely horse, so insofar as he topped the sale in Doncaster as a yearling. He was a £280,000 yearling. He was the pick, in, uh, pick of that sale. And everybody vividly remembers him as a yearling because he's a really good looking mm. horse. Uh, his racing career is there for all to see. He was a very promising horse. His form slightly deteriorated after the Jersey Stakes, but we forgive him for that. And that's how we can sort of uh, build a career for a stallion because He's in our price bracket. He's in the price bracket that, uh, that our breeders um, like to, to use. And from those sort of mid-price or lower stallions, we've created champions on a regular basis. We hope that Gale Force 10 can join them. He certainly is bred well enough to be a, a serious sire. He looks well enough to be a serious sire. And he raced at a very high level, uh, which tells us that if he can transmit those genes, we're looking at another future champion. He's a Dubai graduate as well. As one of the most popular tourist attractions in Ireland, the stud has to combine breeding horses with catering for the hundreds of visitors who pass through its doors each day. From just 12 euros a visit, that's less than 60 dirhams, guests can take part in organized tours or wander the grounds at will, getting a rare insight into life on a working stud farm. How hard is it to, to juggle a working farm, millions of pounds worth of, of bloodstock and, and the general public? Well, we like to think of it as every visitor is a scrutineer or is a, is a test. So that, you know, if we're doing things right, we've nothing to fear from having visitors. And so that means we have to set very, very high standards for ourselves. And we have to do things in a particular way, which the care for the horse is uppermost, because every hour of every day, somebody's looking at us. And in that environment, you could call it uh, stressful, you could call it difficult, you could call it challenging, but I think that it contributes to the high standards that we try to set for ourselves here. Mm. And looking at it the other way around, it's great that Ireland, with such a, a reputation for producing bloodstock, it's great that people can come and see just how it's done. Well, that's done. exactly it. I mean, people ask, why is the state involved in producing racehorses? I mean, our argument is that we are a gateway to the industry for a lot of people. It's called the sport of kings, but it is accessible to everybody. You know, if you want to take part, go racing. You know, if you want to see how it all happens, come here and see it from the ground up. 
and, and you find out that these animals are pampered, they're cared for, they're loved, people shed tears over them. You know, it's a really strong bond between the man and the, and the horse, as everybody in Dubai knows so well. And it's great that we're able to be a window into that world for a lot of people. And for 95% of our visitors, this may be their only experience of thoroughbred breeding, of, of the bloodstock industry. And it's fantastic that people can come in here and have such an intimate connection with the horse. And we would like to think that a high proportion of the visitors to this stud become race goers, become fans of horse racing, and you know, become influencers of opinion to say that horse racing is a good, noble, heritage sport and that the Irish are particularly renowned for it worldwide. At the time of our visit in September, the foals had all been weaned and were on their way to begin new lives elsewhere. However, all new arrivals have a serious act to follow. See the stars who takes it up with a full undergo. He goes a length up now, trying hard, fame and glory for Golden Sword and Rip Van Winkle. But see the stars is going to win the Guineas and Derby Double. And standing in a piece of Irish racing history because it was in this box back in April 2006 that See the Stars was foaled. A son, of course, of Kate Cross and the great broodmare and racemare Urban C, who went on to win the Guineas, the Derby and the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. He's probably the most famous horse to have been bred here in recent years. He was an outstanding foal. He weighed, he's one of the highest weight, birth weight foals we've ever produced. So from the very start, he, he stood out. Um, it was fantastic that he became a world champion. Um, we'd love to have him here standing. He stands not too far from us, and we're very proud that he stands in Ireland at, at a neighbouring farm in Giltown, the Aga Khan's farm. The Irish National Stud is open from February to November each year. Who knows, the next See the Stars to be born here could be just around the corner.